Hi, welcome to the coffee table. I'm Mina Malik Hussain and we've got an art attack on set today. It's very exciting and no one's going to be attacking anybody because, you know, this is a friendly show. But today we're, I'm very excited, as you can tell, to be talking about art and art practice and the NCA and all sorts of fabulous things to two extremely well-known and eminent people in the field. And we're delighted to welcome on set today Kuddus Mirza, who is an art critic and the head of the Fine Arts Department at the National College of Arts in Lahore. And Laila Rahman, who is the head of the printmaking studio department at the NCA and is also a sculptor and a printmaker. So you have talent all around. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. It's Thank lovely you. to have both of you here today. Good to be here. Yes, as you can see, I'm Thank very you. excited. As you know, I usually am when we're talking about art and culture and things, which is what we usually do on the set. So, Kudusa, tell me, as an art critic, you've, you know, like everybody has read something that you've written. And, and it's so important to, do. You, but do you find it difficult to be an art critic in an art scene that is as small as ours? Yeah, I, I think it is very difficult to be honest. A, you don't get paid. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Often. Mm -hmm. So that's like, I think. but yeah. I think more than that, what you is, uh, you are paid mm. in a different kind of uh, way. Because yeah. uh, when you write about art, when you write about people, when you write about their shows, generally they don't read it. Why? Yeah, they don't read it. <laughs> because they, they think there's, well, they, why, why should we uh, kind of be uh, reading something about our own work? Hmm. We know what we are doing. Hmm. Hmm. B, if they read it, they sometimes they like it, hmm. but most of the time they are very hostile. Really? Yeah. But that's good, isn't it? And I think that's a kind of a challenging hmm. thing because hmm. the thing is that if uh, you you feel that uh, someone is not very happy, yes, then you have to change it yourself. You say hmm. you have to make it not a person happy, but make the rest of the people happy. Yes. You know, because uh, when you write, you don't really write for one person. Mm. The artist who's showing or the gallery who's exhibiting that work or the collector who's buying the work. But you're writing for a larger audience, yes. a larger readership, mm. which includes students, which includes uh, artists, mm. which includes, I think, most of it, public who is interested in art. Yes, someone like and, me who's not an artist, but very interested. And then I think uh, when mm. I get their feedback, mm. that is something which kind of really makes you uh, pick your, uh, yes. not pen, we don't use pen anymore, <laughs> no. we just use pen to sign check. Yes, but, uh, the best kind of signing. <laughs> yeah, so you open up your laptop yeah. computer and then you just sit and you write yeah. and I think you feel that okay, you're writing for those like, uh, I don't say millions of people but yes. some because I write in English and yes. you know the English Which readership is, is hmm, not very like hmm, a wide. Hmm. And also our art consumers sort of base is not very big either in Pakistan. Yeah that's true but I think uh, people are generally interested in art. Hmm. It depends that whether art is also interested in them. Ah. Yeah because I think uh, if uh, it's a conversation between two ways. Huh it reaches public mm. and we have examples like in past uh, i think uh, sad ken mm. was a painter yes. who like majority of people know about sad yes. in pakistan mm. even if they don't know anything else about mm. art because he spoke to them in a language which was like commonly understood mm. between mm. maker mm. and uh, the viewer or the audience or the public without really going to uh, changing his like level or changing his standard. Ah, right. So mm. he was still like doing something which could easily be appreciated by mm. let's say galleries or the highest standard yeah. of art, mm. yet accessible to people who are not really trained into art or mm. he's I think when you uh, like music or like writing or like short story, everyone do get some pleasure, do yes. get some something out yes, of it. Yes, quite right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So art is also and like art that. art is like that, yeah. sort of like that flexible and flexible. <laughs> but <laughs> Lela, you're a printmaker and that's sort of one of the many things that you do. Mm -hmm. So what is printmaking? Oh my goodness. Yes, I'm just sort of in, in a nutshell. In a nutshell. In, encapsulate everything. Uh, <laughs> well, it uh, has a history of at least 500 years. Oh. Yes, mm. and within the NCA, it was one of the earliest departments oh. 
to be mm. set up in the 1870s. Okay. There's some beautiful photographs in the archives of uh, the lithography studio mm. being set up and being mm. worked. And we have these beautiful stones, which unfortunately we are not using these days because they need to be recut and reworked mm. and so on. But printmaking is various techniques of mark making on various surfaces. So whether it's okay. woodcut or lino cut mm. or working on a copper plate, zinc plate, steel plate, and then the modes of working. Mm. And of course on stone, which is lithography. But the um, various tools that you use mm. will make a different mark, uh, whether you're incising, intaglio, or working. What's that? So incising is the cutting in? Uh, cutting in, mm. uh, carving out, okay. uh, carving uh -huh. out. And also with um, acid, Ooh. you know, in the words of, uh, not precise words of William Blake, but the corrosive nature mm -hmm. of acid is something that just enticed him to, you know, just make the most fabulous, uh, intricate images. I didn't know that Blake oh, yes. was a printmaker. Absolutely. Oh, yes. multi-talented yeah. person. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> no, because it's, it's interesting to me also because when people think of art, they usually think of painting. Hmm. And there's this, and the NCA has so many departments, like the fine arts department itself is has sort of four, four yes. streams yes. in it. Yeah, and printmaking is one of, one them. of them. Then we have painting, we hmm. have miniature painting, and we have sculpture. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So why is painting and miniature painting separate? Uh, basically, uh, the technique, okay. you know, so uh, where you're painting with particular materials mm -hmm. in miniature mm -hmm. and from the surface to the pigments used and the styles that they are taught mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, you know, the broader strokes of painting on canvas or mm -hmm. on panel, uh, they're distinct. Okay, uh, that you know, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> My judgment, of course, <laughs> is so valid here. <laughs> okay, that's really interesting. And do you feel that... Like the NCA as a whole, and, and I think that the miniature painting has also been part of the program since the very beginning, um, almost. Has it? You know, in, in the know. same way, like as uh, Leila was saying, uh, painting, sculpture, hmm. and printmaking, uh, <coughs> and miniature, yes. they've been taught uh, when the school started hmm. as a mere school of art. Yes. Because I think these were not really called specializations. These mm. were like subjects which right. uh, students were mm. Mm -hmm. uh, opting. And they were like carpentry as well. There was like mm. uh, uh, woodwork. Jewelry like making. Jewelry making yeah. as well. <coughs> but I think when the uh, when uh, NCA became a degree awarding institution, mm. then they were like, uh, it, it was the fine art department. It was architecture. It was uh, design. And design has like four different streaks, mm. and the fine art have four different streaks as okay, well. Right. So these were like inducted. Uh, first, it was mm. like painting, then sculpture, mm. then printmaking started. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, no, actually, printmaking is the, uh, the last one, uh, miniature started, mm -hmm. as a, and then the printmaking mm. started. As in printmaking, uh, the first graduate of printmaking was in 1986. It was like the first okay. film hmm. film making. Because hmm. I'm curious here about the role <laughs> that art institutions have in developing an artistic sensibility in students and then also kind of introducing new techniques and kind of, you know, like shaping the direction hmm. in which people's art interests can go. Can I be very honest? Yes, please. And frank. Yes. <laughs> of course. The thing is that... We at Art Institution, I've been teaching, uh, I don't know, since 1992. Hmm. While well, we learn from my student. Ah. Because we talked about like these four uh, different hmm. uh, things, painting, miniature painting, sculpture and hmm. printmaking. Hmm. But students come up with something completely different. Yeah. They do work yeah. in photography, they do a video, they do performances as well. Yeah. So I think they're uh, with this age, oh. which is like kind of a, you can't really uh, confine them to an institution. Or you mm -hmm. cannot really reduce them to a curricula. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, what they are doing, they are experiencing work of other people, and you learn from yes. uh, them because they are also learning from us. Yes. But they are learning from other people as well mm -hmm. through internet, mm -hmm. through YouTube, mm -hmm. and through information as well. I, I think the world is now. Uh, the, I, I see the role of institution is just to be uh, in. Uh, in line with what was mm. happening around the world. Right. Yeah. But yes. what we try to teach them or what we try to give them mm. Mm. or introduce them is to have 
uh, a confidence in making their own decisions. Mm. We don't really teach them technique. Okay. We mm. introduce technique mm. or we uh, make them uh, work in the studio. But I think whatever they're doing is mm. we leave them to uh, work on their own, mm -hmm. make mm. your own decisions, yeah. whether they're wrong decision, whether they're right decisions. Because I think it's, well, NC is a very small institution. It's a very like kind of a specific uh, college. It mm. deals with art, but I think in generally, and that's why I think most of us who were graduated at NCA mm. wanted to come back and yes. teach as a teacher at mm, NCA. Mm, mm. The reason is that it teaches you something larger in life. Mm. That how to be happy, how to make decision yourself mm. in a society where decisions are made by your parents. Yes, made for elders, you all the time. Marry mm. this. Wear this, eat this, yeah. walk like yeah. this, sit like this, get this profession, uh, uh, get this education. Where is it NCA? They do whatever they want to do. Yeah. And they yeah. say uh, they uh, bear the brunt, whether it's good or bad. Yeah. It's going to be like their decision and their uh, uh, responsibility. Mm -hmm. I think that's why that, that is the actually uh, what's happening at NCA. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it would be a sort of a space for thought and for creative ideas yeah. to flower and and i think that's very important here is that surely at college mm. that should be the place so you should be thinking absolutely. about things absolutely and i think taking on from what kudu sahab has just said um the fact that it's a place where you can really be independent mm. within the confines of pakistani society as we know it today it is really i feel one little liberated little spot yeah. and long may it remain like yes. that <laughs> and I, I and I think uh, beyond the sort of second year or first year of mm. teaching the techniques or you know okay, this is how you actually cast a bronze or whatever yeah you know uh, prepare a copper plate um, beyond that it is uh, really just developing your thought your uh, expose them to different ideas mm. uh, and then it's their choice it's that choice making which really i think makes our students mm. and kudus is quite right that really we are learning all the time yeah. from them you know because of mm, what they bring to the board as well yeah yeah you know? and, and, and then sorry mm. if i interrupt you i tell you uh, an in, uh, anecdote Yes, we I love was, anecdotes. No, no, I mean, like, it's a confirmation. It better be a thing. good one now. <laughs> no. <laughs> no pressure. Illustrating this. Yes. Uh, I remember, like, uh, I, uh, I was teaching a painting class, and yeah. I, I can't name the, the person because yes, she's a course. really big star. Mm. Uh, oh, artist, okay. Good artist now. <laughs> and I remember, like, uh, she's sitting, uh, she was in her final year, and she was trying to figure out whether she's going to put red color yeah, huh. or blue. And she didn't say this to me and she mm. said, sir, mm. <laughs> which color I should use? Uh. So I said, use Vincent Newton. <laughs> <laughs> because I think that's a, which is the paint company for those uh, of you yeah. who don't know. Because that's a, that's a <laughs> job. Mac lipstick that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. of paint. Yes. <laughs> that, that is a job to teach yeah. them use good quality paints. But the aesthetic choices. Yes. Mm. Those choices depend on them. And they have to be theirs yeah. then. Yeah, what course, did, what did she end up choosing? I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm curious. <laughs> wow. But we, we, we do, yeah. uh, in a way, when we have juries, yeah. I mean, I think that has seriously changed in NCA. From ah. when I was a student mm. and you were, really, you were just silent, really, in the juries. Mm. Um, I mean, unless you were really lucky and you came across a teacher like Zahoor Saab. Mm. Um, otherwise, uh, you know, it was more slightly to sort of slightly keep you frightened and okay, the teacher is going to just say that this is what you should have done. Hmm. Uh, now I think um, it's more open. I mean, hmm. I, I, the students listening to this, I hope will probably agree. But uh, <laughs> I hope they'll agree. But hmm. they might well be sort of saying, okay, no, that's not true." No. <laughs> they're, they're working at this time at 10:30 p.m. They must be doing their work <laughs> rather than. No. Yeah, you better not be watching this. <laughs> yeah. Go back to work. <laughs> so, no, I, so it's evolved, really. Then, <coughs> yes, I think so. That whole that whole experience hmm. has evolved to hmm. be one where the where the student has more of a voice and sort of a more interactive thing oh, maybe you know, it teachers. is more like huh? that uh, it's a kind of a we teach now 
rather than uh, technique or anything else, we teach like we deal with we don't teach, but we deal with the ideas. Mm. Yeah. What Leila yeah. is saying mm. is about the crit is like kind of um, you discuss and uh, what are they doing, mm. why they are doing, and how they are doing. Mm. Yes, the choices, which is really crucial. Yeah, their choices, really yeah. Yeah. Their, choices mm. their, their reasons for that, uh, and sometimes at a point in your art practice, you may not know the reasons yourself yeah. Yeah. and you do the a spate of work, yeah. you know, a yeah. series of paintings or prints or whatever and uh, post that mm. you come to an understanding of yourself of why you have done those things and obviously that's the same for the students mm. as well. So when the crit happens, it may be at a moment in time when they are unable to kind of stay, Ar ha, articulate. Uh, but <coughs> the reason that they have done that, uh, again, the peers, uh, their peers and all of us uh, sitting there in judgment yes. on the poor things <laughs> uh, can also uh, sort of, uh, you know, uh, get an idea of the direction they might be taking. Ah, you know, ah. and so that it's is a useful. sort of it's a good nudge in the right direction mm. to that self introspection mm. that you might need to kind yeah. of articulate you know, what your muse was telling you all yeah, along. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and you know, if you've seen uh, like Kudus has, has written on so much and has seen so much and so on. Uh, with that, uh, as part of your own kind of personal baggage, you can then direct a little bit uh, to say that, okay, look at so-and-so's work or so-and-so's work mm. or read this, mm. read that, mm. so that, you know, that the, the field gets a little wider. Yeah. And I think also to come back to your uh, art uh, writing, to critique uh, in words, and hopefully those words are read, you know, it's also important and the smallness of the art community mm. is hampering because yes. I write occasionally mm. and I am always hampered by the fact that, oh, you know, well, I know this person quite well. Yes. And if I make a uh, remark or write a remark, which is sort of a comment, which is not perhaps palatable, then, you know, it just becomes awkward and that really shouldn't does. be mm. the case. Mm. And that's something I mm. want to talk more about. We're going to take a very quick break and then come back to this fascinating conversation. Stay with us. Hi, welcome back to the coffee table. We're talking to Qudus Mirza and Leila Rahman, art superstars about art in Pakistan and Lahore specifically because <laughs> we know it's the best one. <laughs> You're so terrible. I shouldn't say these things on national television. <laughs> but we were talking about art criticism and I keep sort of coming back to it because in a creative community where everybody knows everybody else yeah. and whether you are artists or writers mm. or, you know, sort of filmmakers or whatever it is. I mean, we don't have a culture of criticism yeah. because like you said before we went to the break, mm. it can get quite sticky because people will get offended. I mean, yes, I mean, I've uh, obviously as a student on then post being a student, if you have received criticism, uh, uh, if it's negative criticism, mm. uh, of course it hurts you and, uh, you know, but you mustn't get offended. Uh, uh, you have to really take the lesson from it. Yes. You know, uh, and of course within the art world, it's quite a... Uh, what shall I say? Cat it's not always mouse. nobly intended. Uh, no, no, it's not always nobly <laughs> intended. Far from it. So it is a nasty world, also. Mm. Like any, you know, institution, the innards of it are always uh, pretty dire. Mm. Uh, <laughs> but um, really, for your own, frankly, for your own growth and to kind of really push yourself, mm. uh, if there is a criticism and you've heard it, please do hear it. Mm. Mm. Really, you know, and go with that rather than only just, you know, look for the praise. Right, yeah. Mm. And do you think, Kudus, that because I think of all the creative work that, that we're doing, at least in, you know, Pakistan at least, I can't speak for anybody else, mm -hmm. because I feel like art criticism is actually one place where there is actual criticism happening, but we don't do it for, for literature. I know that we don't. But do you think that that's maybe a reason why the art community is growing and, and developing and expanding? Because there's still people who will sort of tell you what's what. Because, you know, one <laughs> shouldn't art be truthful also? Like, you're tr everyone's trying to tell their own truth. Yeah, I think uh, when you think in terms of truth. Hmm. So then, uh, well, I've been writing on art for many years, most, more than 20 years. But I, I think there's a tendency of uh, in critics as well mm. that we hold the truth. 
Yeah. And actually, mm. if the maker is artist mm. or if the writer is commentator, they both try to search what is the truth. Mm. And I think they both are dealing with yes. that. And I think uh, that is the success of Pakistani art is, as well. Whether what I said, artists do not read mm. about the, their work, but <laughs> at, at least they're reading something else. Mm. They're reading literature, they're mm. reading uh, about politics, they're reading about history as well. Mm. And I think a good critic is also the one who, if he or she is reading only art, on art, it's not going to be very in exciting or interesting. Mm. Mm. A good mm. critic or and good the artist... The lens would be very tell, limited yeah, also. it's very limited. So mm. the world of uh, art in Pakistan, <coughs> I don't know about other uh, creative expressions like uh, film or... Uh, mm. literature or music or theatre or dance. But I think uh, in terms of visual arts, uh, the thing, what what is happening is like uh, the writers and the artists are in conversation with each other. Mm. Mm. Because the uh, uh, majority of, uh, uh, it's a very uh, unique place because majority of writers on art happen to be an artist. Mm -hmm. I am an artist. Mm -hmm. I, I was mm -hmm. trained as an artist. Mm -hmm. And many other people who have been writing on art yeah. had some background of right. art. So at least what they're writing on it, mm -hmm. they have a kind of a command in mm -hmm. terms of, uh, or they have the knowledge yes. in terms of whatever they're writing mm -hmm. on it. And it kind of sounds more authentic then. It, it wouldn't be quite <laughs> maybe fair if I were to sort of be an art critic, but I have no art background. Yeah, I think well, that's... Uh, mm -hmm. that's well, another, I could, but... I, anyway, actually, yes. uh, you know, my, uh, <laughs> <laughs> having said like that, <laughs> but I feel that it will be also a, a fresh breath if a doctor is going to write on art. Mm -hmm. That would be something interesting. Mm -hmm. Or like a philosopher is writing on art. Yes. Or like, let's say a politician is writing, writing. if huh. he is writing. Huh. Uh, on anything, on art, <laughs> on anything, <laughs> on anything. <laughs> on anything. anything. Because I think politicians are the best artists <laughs> <laughs> somehow. Well, you know, they're the most adept, certainly. <laughs> because I, I think uh, when we talk about art criticism and art making, for me, because mm. I've uh, experienced both. Yes. For me, there's no difference between mm. uh, writing or making a painting, uh -huh. because both are. Uh, different means to arrive at the same goal. Oh, indeed. Yeah, because you're mm. talking, you're dealing with images mm. and you're trying to solve those uh, problem, mm. uh, visual problems or problems about uh, your surroundings mm. and then you reach through words or you th reach through images. Mm. And somehow I think uh, words are also images because they yes. evoke yes, yes, images yes. in our mind. Right. Yeah. Mm. And the images mm. are also uh, like words because when we're talk, uh, talking about, as Laila was saying, or as like uh, we experience, we teach or we discuss art in, in during our trip. Mm. And there is a work of art and we just talk using language. Yes. So I think the criticism and art making are not really too different uh, oh. or too distant. Hmm, hmm. Or, uh, or at least shouldn't be too far apart from like each other. They are like... Kind of the, they're like best friend mm. go hands in hand yeah. or like two tracks of a train mm. which never meet but they are parallel. Just parallel. Mm. Waving at each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hello, I'm listening. Yeah. <laughs> no, but no, or pretending no. that I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, I just didn't see you there. No, no, on the mm. parallel track, I didn't see you, didn't notice. So, Lela, what do you think about the idea that people say that art is an elitist thing? And look, it's an interesting, at least for the NCA, because there are so many people from all over the country mm. who come to the NCA mm. from such diverse backgrounds. Absolutely. So when you look at that, like personally, I don't feel like art is elitist when you look at your student body. Absolutely which is not. Saying, I, think, I think NCA is really a slice of true Pakistani life. Mm. And if there's any hope in this country, it is really within for the Mal Road, mm. which is our address. Uh, uh, but uh, <laughs> four as in the number yes. four. Uh, um, <laughs> no, I think we have a quota system. Hmm. And um, thanks to that, we get um, students literally from every province. Yeah. And they are amazing. Hmm. You know, their expressiveness, they may not be able to speak Sindhi or hmm. read Pashto or whatever it might be. But they, um, they can talk <coughs> through their work. Hmm. You know, and I hope that in the four years that they're with us in NC, at least in the fine art department, that, <laughs> you know, they, they take something yeah. which is uh, going to last them. 
Do you think that formalized art teaching, such as one has in an art college, mm -hmm. also kind of helps solidify a practice? Because, you know, like culturally in the olden days, it was more a sort of, um, you know, you had an ustad and you were the mm -hmm. student and you just kind of learned by doing and observing. Mm -hmm. But this is like a formalized now degree mm -hmm. that you get and there's a classroom yeah. practice. Yeah. And do you think that, that that's helped generally? Uh, yes, I think it does help. Hmm. I think it does help to have that kind of basic structure hmm. um, I mean people specifically with printmaking they always confuse it with textiles and sort of block printing as ah, but, so, but why would is, they do that uh, because <laughs> printing is mistaken for printmaking you know there's a distinction uh -huh. right uh -huh. so what's the distinction the distinction <laughs> <Tell me. laughs> the di the, 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 come to the printmaking <laughs> department <laughs> and you'll see with the but, camera so when in um, all students entering NCA, whatever department mm. they've chosen, yes. uh, do the foundation year, okay. where they go through basic art history uh -huh. and so on, and uh, they do their Islamiyat and Park studies. Oh and they gosh, do, even uh, in college? Yes. Huh, you do have to actually, I'm just thinking Drafting, my own. you know, drawing, mm. sculpture, and uh, so on. Um, design, these are the four mm. things that they are doing in the, in the first year. And then in second year, they split off into their departments of choice, in the fine art department, we uh, break them up into four sections. So they go through miniature painting, painting, sculpture, and printmaking. Oh, great. Uh, through the mm, second mm. year. So that they're in a position to choose yes. their sort of so-called specialization, mm. their mm. major, in and third year. And a, huh. but, but having said that, they are uh, within the department, if there's a sculptor wanting to sit in miniature painting and do some work mm. there, that is more, not only allowed, but it is encouraged, mm. you know. So we've had uh, printmakers go into sculpture, we've had uh, painters come into printmaking mm. and so on and so forth. And, uh, as you know, one cross-pollination, I imagine, would be like fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, and so, so not only have they got a smattering of mm. the four disciplines in second year, but then if they want to combine and, uh, you know, uh, mix and match, they are uh, welcome to do so. Mm. Mm. And do you feel that students, because again, I don't think that art is is a subject that's but given a lot of importance for middle school. So for yeah. sort of, if you're coming from a metric or an O-level yeah. background, yeah. Do, you, do you get a lot of students who haven't done any art in school? Uh, yes, some. Hmm. Yes, a fair number, in fact. I think hmm. most of uh, yeah. them, because yeah. uh, really, most, yeah, yeah, of, most them. of them, because hmm. uh, as Leila was saying, that uh, we uh, have a quota system, hmm. so uh, we uh, get students from different hmm. areas. Hmm. Yeah. But there is another kind of mix, which is a class mix, hmm. because we get students like uh, we had a student, and her father was a federal minister, yeah. and we also had uh, had a student. And we still have like students. Uh, one, one of their parents work, is working as like house, uh, house help, help. Mm. or it's like a, a uh, working as a driver mm. or as mm. a guard. But I think the good thing about NCA is that once they come into yeah. the institution, they come with this kind of baggage mm. or background. Mm. Background is about language, background is about class, back mm. background is about gender as well. Yes. I remember. Uh, teaching first year, when I used to teach first year drawing class, and uh, after the class is over, so we used to have a discussion about their work. Mm. So all of them were standing in the first uh, day. Mm. All of them, w the same section is standing in two groups. Oh. Girls on that side, yeah. boys on that side. And you, the first day is so fraught in any case. <laughs> no, but it was... The, huh. you know, it just kind of naturally is, floated yeah. apart. This, this is something which they're trained. Yeah. Because yeah, if they're is, coming from a yes. school, yeah. so uh, any, any school, any school, any so school. there has to yeah. be... Like if, school, if they're province. from mm. convent, yeah. or let's say yeah. if there's some school in Bhakkar, uh, mm. boys school in Bhakkar or Miyawali, so they are supposed mm. to be like kind of... Uh, yeah, it's just a reflex now to just... What happens later on, uh, during the term that they start like kind of mixing uh -huh. and then at the end uh, of the term it's just like one group uh -huh. and then you, you realize how healthy uh -huh. yeah and how happy they are mm. because i think they're kind of and the uh, kind of uh, th there's no problem whether a, a person is from uh, northern area and another person mm. is from like uh, synth mm. or, uh, mm. some, somewhere like kind of interior synth mm. because they, they become friends mm. yeah. they have like 
even they get married with each other yeah. and I, because deep down they realize that we are all human beings yes. and we share something mm. uh, which is like common and, and that i think that uh, nca what uh, when you're talking about formal education and how a formal education can make an artist i think formal education does not make an artist mm. Mm. it cannot mm. uh, because we have a class of let's say 50 uh, students in fine art department mm. and not 50 students are going to make into an artist ah. only one or two are going to make an artist it happens mm. like that mm. it happens all over the world Aye. and it is normal and natural ah. if you know if uh, each year we are going to produce 50 artists uh, from nca the whole world is going yeah. to be taken over by artists <laughs> there won't be any other profession like, left be let, let, let's not go for that yeah. this is something i want i'm curious about like you know how do you make it as an artist we're going to take a very quick break and come back to this pressing question stay with us Hi, welcome back to the coffee table. We're having a most fascinating conversation about art in Pakistan with Kudus Mirza and Leila Rahman. And we were talking about how do you make it as an artist? Because one thing I think that is challenging, at least for local students, is that art is expensive too. And being in in college where it's an ideal space, you know, you have studios, you have teachers you have you know you have a community you have friends that you can talk to about what you're doing and share your work mm. but then when you sort of come out of that ideal yeah. bubble mm. especially for example like print making where you need a very specific set of equipment mm. to be able to produce your work yeah so then isn't that like incredibly challenging like how does one manage uh well uh first of all it is difficult mm. you know and you need a big slice of luck to make it yeah. in the sense on the world stage mm. apart from luck obviously you have to have something to say mm. you know and mm. to be able to express that in a meaningful and um, perhaps nuanced manner mm. you mm. know for it to have endurance um but um i find that um in the last uh five seven years a lot of the graduates uh be they uh, and more surprisingly where they are women because they might be living in they might be from lahore mm. so they have family homes in which they which they reject <laughs> and they uh you know find a space together huh. and they pay the rent mm. uh, you know three four women and uh that becomes their home and their studio space and so on mm. and increasingly more and more it's a sort of a natural thing that you yeah. know girls from yeah. karachi are sort of not going back to mm. karachi you know they're going to come to lahore and sort of hang out and work at whatever kind of jobs whether it's teaching little kids or yeah. teaching them science or teaching them english or urdu or whatever yeah. not necessarily becoming the art teacher mm. in a school mm. because mm. Uh, frankly art teachers in schools are very hard done by because they have to kind of do little birthday cards and do the boards and all of that mm-hmm. kind of thing as well <laughs> so i mean this way they just basically earn money to keep mm. themselves in paint as far as printmakers go it is tough because unless you have a press and equipment mm. and so on it's difficult to do however in recent months uh, uh, the first printmaking studio uh, professional studio mm. has opened up in um, in lahore oh called inkster Inkster, uh, Inkster okay. Print Studio, Printmakers it's, Note, <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, run by uh, a friend and colleague called uh, Saad Ahmed, who mm-hmm. uh, is a uh, product of NCA Printmaker, yeah. and so it's a studio space that you pay for, and mm-hmm. you can mm-hmm. work over there. But prior to him, Afshar Saab, Afshar Malik had a uh, press, and mm-hmm. uh, Nazir Shatawla had a press, and mm-hmm. so on. Mm-hmm. But you know, it wasn't like. A, a running studio that you could just mm. say okay i'm going to book the press for 10 days yeah. and pay for yeah. that and do your work and whatever mm. so this is a you know a big thing that this has started and mm. but on this uh, to come back to the question of how do you make it uh you have to get into exhibitions you okay. have to mm. um you know keep working towards whether it's a group show initially perhaps because that's easier for mm. two three artists to uh, be able to manage mm. that mm. you know and less daunting also you don't and have to sort of and less daunting put in an entire gallery worth of show yeah. of yeah. pieces yeah and then it helps if the art critics amongst us mm. uh, pick up on those shows and they 
uh, give them uh, reviews and sometimes whether it's obviously if it's a favorable review it's better but mm. the mm. fact that if you have someone been, reads it I, <laughs> but i think more than that it is it depends on your work mm. because i i think uh, despite the fact that if you are like kind of a uh, privileged you come from a privileged background mm -hmm. you don't have any problem about the space you don't have any problem if, in terms of you know, uh, keeping your kitchen uh, mm -hmm. keep uh, to keep your kitchen yes. uh, kitchen yes. running or anything else mm -hmm. yet you won't be able to make it mm -hmm. and uh, i was reading something uh, uh, there's an israeli writer amos oz and i was reading his interview and he said that he was uh, living in a kibbutz and which is uh, like a community, small mm, community mm. in Israel. They said that we had a one bedroom flat. Mm. And since uh, we were supposed to do uh, productive work mm. and writing was not supposed considered as productive <laughs> work. So he said, okay, I asked for space uh, in the uh, common uh, room and yeah. he said, no, no, writing, this is your personal work. It doesn't have to do <laughs> any, anything with else. the community. He said that I... Uh, my wife used to, uh, my uh, uh, small, uh, like young daughter, they were in bedroom. Mm. So I used to sit on the toilet seat and used to write my <laughs> oh novel. Oh my gosh. I, I wrote my two novels mm. by sitting in the toilet seat, on the wow. toilet seat, say at night. And so uh, when, I, uh, when I hear about facilities, opportunities, and say, mm. then I remember that toilet seat. <laughs> so even because if you have mm. something to say, if, and if your work is uh, good, despite the fact that you don't get a gallery in the beginning, mm. despite the fact that a uh, critic writes nasty review, mm. despite the fact that you have a problem in terms of uh, supporting yourself, yet you make it. I remember like an, a, an artist who's like, uh, his work uh, was sold for the highest uh, price in Pakistan. Mm. And he was uh, doing work in a medium which uh, was different. Mm. So there's a friend of mine and his gallery in Karachi. So I asked him and said, why don't you show? And he said, no, no, but nobody is going to buy these are photographs. No. So I said, no, but the work uh, is very good. Uh. And he, he didn't get a uh, show. Mm. And today... And now that, that gallerist is like... <laughs> today that gallery still regrets that... Mm. Oh, mm. He, he said that I should have given him yes, a show. Yes, quite right. So I think and this is something uh, like if, if it's your work is good, mm. you will end up by... Uh, mm. And even if I say, even if you don't make it mm. in this world, you'll make it in another world. No, because we're going to make it in this but world. Despite <laughs> that, no one wants to be Van Gogh, you know, didn't sell anything, like one thing in his whole because, lifetime. Yeah, because... But I think to somehow, be, sorry, yeah. somehow... If you make it in this world, mm. it will be really bad if you don't make it in the next world. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> also true. <laughs> <laughs> because then you die completely. <laughs> die out completely. We've taken a very philosophical turn now. <laughs> but what is sort of... Uh, do you think that our gallery culture is improving? Because it's also where do you show your work? Actually, that, that's mm. a really uh, good point. Gallery culture is improving. It is. And a, a gallery is... Uh, are uh, serving two purposes. Mm. One purpose is selling work mm. so the artist can sustain. Mm. The, I think the bigger purpose is to show the work so people should know what works is uh, being mm. done. Mm. And uh, it's almost like a kind of a service to the community. Quite mm. right. Because mm. in a country where there are no public spaces for mm. art, there yeah. are no museums, yep. there are no public galleries, uh, on, on TV or in the media, in the print media, there's very hard, uh, like there's hardly a space yes. for visual arts. That's very important. And schools don't have like uh, teaching on art. Mm. Colleges don't have a teaching. So mm. we don't have any exposure to art mm. if we uh, come to like general population. Yes. So the gallery is a public space. You don't have to buy a ticket. It's not an elitist thing. Mm. Mm. You can just walk in. Mm. You look at the work yes. and say, well, this is the recent work. Mm -hmm. Whether you like it, whether you don't like it. Yes. Whether you understand it, whether you mm. don't understand it. And what is understanding also? Because, yeah, because what, what you feel about a piece is your understanding. Exactly. It, it doesn't have to be mm. some epiphany. And actually, if I see something, mm. I may not understand it, but mm. I may understand it years later. Yeah. Mm. Or may enjoy it, mm. or may look for it. Because I have. I think Gelli's, Gelli culture is really uh, strong in Pakistan. Because, uh, especially ah. in Karachi, ah. Karachi, we say that artists 
are in Lahore. <laughs> Most artists are in Lahore. <laughs> Uh, I have friends in Karachi, so I have to <laughs> change <know>. my character. <laughs> most, <laughs> but, but not most, all. <laughs> most, most gallies are in Karachi. Yes, and a lot of Lahore artists tend to show in Karachi Absolutely. because that's just yeah. generally where that conversation seems to be happening. Yeah. And actually, and really that divide. Run also. Ah, yeah, ah. that's also mm. important. And that divide between Lahore and Karachi, you know, honestly, does not exist in. Art. art. And it shouldn't exist anywhere yeah, it's because it's nonsense. Think, mm, but it's important because if you're producing art, it has you have to be in conversation with your audience. Yeah. Mm. And Pakistani artists yeah. should be seen by Pakistani mm. audiences. Absolutely. And yeah. have some kind of sort of, imp you know, where your cogs turn a little mm. bit. Because surely that's what art should be doing. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, for me, if I've got work in a show mm. and I hear a comment by whomever who doesn't even know that I'm the artist whose work mm, that is. Mm. And um, uh, they perceive something in it that I have been trying to express. Ah. That is it. That is it. Mm. That's enough to make my... It's an eureka uh, moment. Uh, yeah, it's a eureka moment, yeah. you know. Yeah. And uh, so the more that uh, we have galleries mm. and uh, people, as you say, as Kudus is saying, is not ticketed, you don't have to pay to go in. Mm. And I wish we had just more and more spaces. Lahore used to have galleries, and now even recently, Rothas too is shutting down. Really? Yes. Oh, no. I mean, it's kind of. But I think not uh, going to be. But, like, but you know, like the Biennales, for example, mm -hmm. that's that a is, great yeah. space. That is a huge thing. And that I think is a huge it's thing. and it's also, I think, a really clever way to rethink our idea of gallery also, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. where can you show art? Yes. And yeah. Where should it belong? And you mm -hmm. know, exactly. if you so you just go around the Biennale spaces, you're like, yes. whoa. Yeah. But I think you can have art anywhere. Mm -hmm. There are parallel spaces as well, hmm. like both in Karachi, in Lahore, and hmm. even in Islam of as well, which is not a like kind of a established gallery, yes. but a hmm. space which hmm. is like kind of a, a house which yeah. is going to be demolished or a warehouse hmm. or some public space, hmm. which is turned into an art experience. And this is not uh, peculiar to Pakistan. Everywhere yeah. else, hmm. you go, there are galleries which are like abandoned tube stations hmm. or warehouses hmm. as well. So I think uh, rather than uh, public going to art, art yes. comes to public. Ah. I think and uh, that kind of creates a bigger and larger ah. and more intelligent dialogue, as we were yes. saying about ah. Biennale. I, I was so happy in Lahore yes. Biennale because I think the spaces were Lahore Museum and Tollington Market and Bradlaw Hall, yes. Obari Khaveli, ah. Lahore you know, Fort, the Planetarium, the planetarium. Which is great yeah. spaces. And I think when you see ah. people over there, mm. and I was so happy, A, because uh, the work was so good, yeah. it yes. was fabulously uh, yeah. planned curated. and mm. created and mm. curated. But when you visit those spaces, mm. you find people who you don't see in mm. art mm. circle mm. or art mm. crowd. Mm. And it's mm. so heartening to see, oh yeah, they're talking about the work. Yes. Actually, mm. uh, that was the best thing about Ben mm. Ali. Mm. Quite it, right. Yeah, but it, it kind opened of, up. Ha, and yeah. it, it takes away that kind of hesitation that some people might have interacting yeah. with art where you uh. feel like you have to be very solemn Absolutely. about it. Uh, yeah. Also, I think there can be, uh, art can be a, a very intimidating world yes. to enter, mm. you know, uh, let alone making it big or whatever. What yeah. it but it's just the fact that, you know, okay, I'll, I'll have to go into that door and be able to uh, understand and speak ah, and yeah. whatever and God knows who will be there and whatever. And mm. But... Um, I think to uh, the, what the Biennale has done and hopefully will continue to do is these, A, the wonderful spaces, yeah. you know, living in Lahore, I hadn't been to Brad Lahore, yeah. you know, and uh, uh, to experience Mubarak Haveli in that way or mm -hmm. earlier the Fakir Khana Museum and of course the Lahore Fort also. Uh, uh, yes, uh, it brings the city alive and knits it together, mm -hmm. which I think is really important yep. and it allows for uh, all manner of people to constantly be visiting these sites and uh, we all gain an understanding. Quite right. You know, and everyone's and so, understanding is different. Yeah. And the more we and kind equally of... equally valid. Huh, and the and, more porous spaces mm. like this that we create, mm -hmm. I think it's we're moving towards at least trying to be more tolerant of difference and different yeah. ideas mm. and diff and people's... And we were talking about truth earlier, but it's also about how different people see the world. And you don't have to agree it with exactly. it or understand it, but you can still yeah. see it mm. and acknowledge it and be like, mm. oh. Mm. I think okay. that, that is the uh, basic uh, issue of, uh, in our society. Mm. And that's the basic fact of art is that it makes you think about something else. 
which you are not and yeah. equally I appreciate. Yeah. When I see, uh, in terms of writing as well, mm, because yeah. I'm a, probably I'm a Pakistani writer, but I'm writing something uh, a ma white man. Mm. About, I'm writing about a wh white man mm. or a white woman mm. or a person from Africa, mm. and it just come out of my skin and go to someone else's yeah. skin. And yeah. I think art is also like that. That you, when you uh, see uh, the Biennale as well. When I was looking uh, a work by Wild Chalky or mm. John yeah. Ekemprah's work, I didn't have any background about these huh. artists yes. mm. or their mm. concerns. Yeah. But I could relate to them yeah. so much because deep down mm. there was a kind of a human pain or yeah. pain yeah. of uh -huh. the history yes. or pain of, uh, pain of uh, society, mm -hmm. current political mm. society, to which I can completely connect and say, fine. Mm. This is another way of seeing it, yeah. and this is another way of seeing it yes. as well. And I think we are kind of, uh, unfortunately, we have been losing that space in our culture that there is only one way, there is mm. only one book, mm. there is only one uh, um, uh, system, thinking, um, there is only one approach, yes. Yes. and there is only one truth. Yeah. I think art, especially Biennale also, or any other... And just uh, art, in general, art in general, you know, for us. You realize that yes. there are many truths, and there are true at the same time I, I, when we experience it I, uh, sorry to come back into NCA because this you is know, a problem that's where I work so I have to <laughs> promote it or I have to do a PR but you NCA know NCA stays, stays with you yeah. Yeah. NCA is in your blood yeah. if you go to NCA it's there so in uh, drawing class the first drawing class hmm. uh, when you have a Still life, what we call still life is yeah. like, okay, you put up a uh, bunch of objects, bunch of objects, huh. like you put five bottles in the middle and two plates and five trays or whatever, some fruit. And then you ask one to sit in mm. the circle yeah. and to make a drawing. And each one is going to make a drawing. At, at the end of the day, all like 30 drawings are going to be different views of the same thing. Yes, that's and right. And 30 drawings are, uh, and like, if they are good drawings, mm. 20 drawings will be uh, marked like pass, mm. like 50, 50, 50, mm. or 60, 60, 60. Some will be less, some will be slightly higher. Uh. And then realize, oh, there is not just one right answer. Yes. There are multiple right answers. Mm. And mm. those multiple right answers are different from each other. Yeah. And yet they are right. You know, this kind of lesson mm. which art teaches them through this hands-on experience stays with them. Mm. So I think the kind of a tolerance which yes, you see at yes. NCA, uh, or I'm mm. not talking about NCA, but any art mm. institution, mm. BNU, yes, Indus, Punjab mm. University, Institute of Fashion Design, Karachi University, the kind of tolerance that, okay, there is another point of view, mm. there is another way mm. of seeing it, mm. and I may not agree with that, yes. but who knows that I may start agreeing it in, uh, with it, yeah. like mm. in, uh, mm. or even if I don't Ever agree, agree with ever it. it doesn't matter. We yes. have, uh, we, there is a bigger space and there's a bigger spaces for different views as well. Yeah. And I think that diversity uh. is so good because in contemporary Pakistani art, sorry, I was not supposed to say contemporary. <laughs> because, <laughs> but, because apparently all art in Pakistan is, is contemporary, contemporary. So it's just art. <laughs> so uh, uh, present art. Let, present let's put, art. Uh, yes. get another uh, <laughs> In uh, present art of Pakistan, there's so much diversity. Um. You're, you see people doing calligraphy, you mm. see people doing painting, you, uh, 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 still life, landscape, portraits, mm. abstract, political work, no, sculpture, yeah. print, Every, print uh, making, lithographs, <laughs> miniature, everything, mm. yeah. and they all exist in the same yeah. place. It is yeah. amazing. It really yeah, is sort of, just, you know, at the best of it, it really seems like, you know, it's, it's a slice of the best of us. So Truly. many different ideas yeah. and talents come together mm. on this sort of very uplifting note. Thank you so much, both of you, for <laughs> being you. on the show. Thank you. And for this wonderful conversation. Thank you guys for watching this. I hope you are all inspired now to go to art school. Whether you make it or not, you will be a better person for it. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. And we will see you next time on The Coffee Table. Bye now.